If you think I look very similar to last week's video, you are not imagining things. I did drive 3.5 hours across the state of Michigan from one end to the other and decided to film two videos. Hello and welcome to or back to my channel. I'm Kit and today we're going to look at Olivia Alexa's video, Men Are Oppressed, Not Women. Before we get into it, I would like to note that I don't know Olivia and these are my thoughts and opinions on the content she puts out for public consumption. That being said, thank you for clicking on this video and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Links to my socials and Patreon are below along with sources and resources and now onto the reason we're all here. Olivia Alexa is a YouTuber and her main thing seems to be dating tips for men, except for today's video. In March, Olivia posted, men are oppressed, not women. They've been lying to you. And I'm sure you can see why that caught my attention. I decided it would be a great way to highlight how patriarchy harms men as well as women. And weirdly enough, Olivia gets through this whole video without mentioning patriarchy, which leads me to wonder what she thinks is oppressing men, women? A cabal of deep state lizards? This is not going to be an us versus them video, and I am side-eyeing Olivia's decision to call her video Men Are Oppressed, Not Women. Also, who was the they that is lying? Anyway, if you want to learn more about anything I say in this video, I'll have links below and Some More News also posted a video in May asking Are Men Okay? which I'll also link below. And finally, patriarchy is not shorthand for men. Yes, it's a system by men for men, but it was created before anyone currently on earth was born. And again, it's a system which anyone can uphold. Anyway, it's a short video, so let's get into it, starting with the intro. You've probably heard it said before, women are oppressed. Now, this might sound logical to some people, but that's a very surface level take. Dig deeper and you'll see this narrative of men always being the oppressors doesn't quite hold up. Historically, men haven't been just lounging around on thrones while women suffered. Most men grinded through life with tough backbreaking work. The idea that men have it easy is a misconception that's often used to make men feel guilty like they owe women something. Once upon a time, my mother told me white privilege doesn't exist because her grandmother had to work in a factory. I tried to explain that white privilege doesn't mean your life will be easy, just that being white isn't what makes it difficult. Women's oppression isn't predicated on the belief that men have it easy or that only women struggle. This notion that only one person or party can struggle or be oppressed at a time is the surface level take. Fast forward to today, there's a loud chorus of women claiming oppression and urging other women to do the same. This has been hammered in so much that even good guys can start to feel like that they're bad guys. It's a manipulation tactic. Make men feel guilty and then they won't even question when women start asking for more. Why does Olivia think women claim oppression and urge other women to do the same? What is it that women are asking for more of? Why are they asking it of men? Now, let me be clear here. Are there women who have and still are mistreated by men? Absolutely, every single minute. But is that the whole story? Far from it. Yes, there are bad men out there, but their actions are not because their victims are women. It's because they're just terrible freaking human beings. When a man mistreats a woman, it's rarely an isolated behavior. What I mean is these men usually have a pattern of negative behaviors that go beyond just their interactions with women. These men are usually liars have control and anger issues and lack empathy. These are general negative traits that anyone can possess. It's not gender specific. Yet a lot of female victims think that they're targeted solely because of their gender, leading them to pin blame on all men. That's a very flawed narrative. This skewed perspective has led to a very dangerous blurring of lines between male authority and tyranny. Any man with confidence and power is now seen as a potential threat. What is her source for the claim a lot of female victims think they're targeted solely because of their gender, leading them to blame all men. And what does that have to do with blurred lines between male authority and tyranny? This idea that systems designed by men inherently oppress women is automatically accepted by our society without any scrutiny. Yes, the patriarchal systems are patriarchal systems and they are designed to benefit men and oppress women. That is not an accident and that also doesn't mean life for men is easy. Being considered the strong and capable sex has consequences. And here's an example of intersectionality is typically wealthy white men making laws for everyone else. 
And that fact is not without scrutiny. Studies have been done about how patriarchy harms men and women, as we'll discuss in this video. I found the intro both vague and all over the place, but at least your seven examples are mostly to the point. But there's seven main ways men are oppressed. Number one, laws. Look at the laws passed to protect women. We're talking about voting rights, workplace equality, laws against domestic violence, you name it. Women have fought for these rights and rightly so, they've gained them. But where does that that leave men. In the legal department, men are lagging. Where are the laws specifically designed to protect men's rights? In a patriarchal system, men, specifically white men, are considered the default. Laws are added or changed accordingly for those who initially weren't considered, such as women and marginalized groups. Workplace rights aren't gendered, and despite the name, neither is the Violence Against Women Act. As for voting, I'm guessing she means registering for selective service, and I agree that that's wrong. No one should be required to register. And if you want to affect change on any of these, if you want to see employment laws taken more seriously, if you want to end selective service, petition, protest, vote for people who agree, call your reps. Number two, movements. Now consider the success of women's movements. They've been highly successful in furthering their causes. But flip the script, where are the equivalent movements for men? Almost non-existent. Men's issues, especially those that don't fit the traditional masculine narrative, are often brushed under the rug. That's oppression. That's patriarchy. Patriarchy says men are rugged individuals who need nothing from anyone, and if you think there's something wrong with the status quo, what kind of man are you? But people didn't just create movements and give them to women. Women saw a need and built their own movements. Men can do the same, and I would encourage them to do so. I see a lot of opportunities for men's movements to improve life for men and boys, and, well, the fact is, is that there are a lot of men, if not most, who will only hear things from another man. Number three, domestic violence. In cases of physical abuse, there's a default assumption that men are the aggressors. If a man defends himself, he's in big trouble. The system often sides with women, painting them as the default victims. It's a skewed scenario where male victims of abuse are often overlooked and their experiences are often severely diminished. That's oppression. That's patriarchy. Patriarchy says men are big and strong and tough, and women are small and weak and gentle, so a woman could never hurt a man, and if she can, what kind of man is he? But shelters and VAWA didn't just spring up out of nowhere. Women saw a need, and they fought for it, they built it. Men can and should do the same. And we can all start by not mocking victims of abuse or telling them that they should have known better, regardless of their gender. Number four, custody cases. In legal battles, especially custody cases, the bias is so blatant. Fathers, no matter how fit they are, are often at a disadvantage against the mother's maternal instinct argument. It's a stereotype that's conveniently used against men. Financially too, men are usually burdened unfairly in divorces, reinforcing the outdated notion that they are the primary breadwinners. Even with the changing workforce dynamics, that's oppression. That's patriarchy. Patriarchy says men go out and make money while women stay home and nurture the kids. However, only 10% of divorce cases involve alimony, with 7% of recipients being women. As for custody, 90% is decided outside of court, and when men decide to go for custody, they typically get it. Even with those changing workforce dynamics, women still take on the majority of child care and housework, which is how it ends up being mostly women who receive alimony and child custody. Number five, support systems. In terms of support systems, women have a multitude and a plethora of groups backing them. From career advancement to abuse support, there's a network out there for something that a woman has going on. But where are the support groups for men? Guys usually don't speak their feelings or desires because of the very real fear of ridicule or dismissal. Men's issues are often sidelined and considered less significant than women's. That's oppression. That's patriarchy. Patriarchy says men are strong and stoic and women are weak and emotional. Also, women saw that women needed help or were struggling and so they created groups and movements. Men should do the same if they see or feel a need. Number six, societal expectations. In terms of societal expectations on men, men are taught to bottle up their emotions and not show weakness. They're expected to just tough it out and keep their struggles to themselves. When a man shows vulnerability, he's often viewed as less capable or less worthy of empathy than his female counterparts. He's told to man up and stop acting like a punk. This double standard is everywhere. Men are damned if they stick to traditional roles and damned if they don't. That's oppression. 
stop acting like a punk, huh? Where I'm from, they were told to stop acting like a girl, but anyway, that's patriarchy. Patriarchy says men are strong and stoic and women are weak and emotional. And if someone tries to break out of their assigned role, well, they had better be shamed back into their box real quick. That's how these standards keep going through the years. It takes courage to step outside your role and strength to stay outside of it and say, no, this is wrong. This is hurting people. We need to change things. Number seven, the demonization of masculinity. Now, yes, some traditional masculine behaviors can use an update, like the reluctance to seek help, whether it be medical or mental. But labeling masculinity itself as fundamentally toxic is where the real issue lies. This approach demonizes and marginalizes the positive aspects of masculinity, feeding into a narrative that suggests that there's an inherent flaw in simply being a man. That's oppression. I'm a bit confused as to how we ended up here after the last one, but I guess the difference is that she's saying not all masculine traits are toxic. And my question is, why do traits have to be gendered at all? If it's good for men to be logical, confident, stable, and so on, surely that's good for everyone? Also, the term toxic masculinity doesn't refer to masculinity in general, and it was actually created by the mythopoetic men's movement. And I do find it kind of poetic that a men's movement created by men for men created a term to describe those toxic elements of societally enforced masculinity as described in point six, but Apparently, they did it wrong. So what we're looking at here is a very complex situation where men, contrary to popular belief, face their own kind of oppression with absolutely no solution. It's not about undermining women's issues, but more about acknowledging the gender narrative is more intricate than it seems. Men's struggle and the oppression they face need to be part of the conversation as well. I'm glad she doesn't want to undermine women's issues, but... I am amazed as to how she got through a whole video about men's issues without mentioning patriarchy. How are you going to tackle the problem if you can't even name the problem? Well, she did say there's absolutely no solution, but that's not true. I would like to take a moment to shout out some men's groups. In addition to r slash bro pill on Reddit, there's also a call to men, the mankind project, and we are brothers. Feel free to suggest your own men's groups below. Obviously, I don't have any experience with them, but I do want to try and help. It doesn't have to be hopeless. Things don't have to be stuck in the status quo. And I think that's something that drives me crazy about videos like Olivia's. Her title pits men and women against each other and her conclusion is that men's issues are important, but well, nothing we can do about it. What sort of message is that? She could at least seek out men's groups and put them in her description box, shout them out in videos, donate to men's causes, and her platform is much larger than mine. She could make a real difference. Assuming she actually cares about men and isn't just grifting. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.